Bob, here's your receipt. Oh. Just so you've got something that says I have it. What are, what are these? I've seen, uh, we actually have a clock that looks a little bit like that, but it's it's uh, electronic, it's newer, and it has right. a tide component to it. What what are these sort of clocks? Well, well these are Connecticut shelf clocks, all of them. The one on the left is uh, sort of a, an Empire style from about 1865. Uh, the one in the middle, it's a standard Connecticut steeple clock. Uh, they, they made a ton of them, uh, but they were good clocks, and the whole key to any of these is condition. This one here is a very interesting history on that type of clock. That's called an OG style clock. The one here yeah. with the Rome, Italy yep. on it? Uh, yeah. That's an OG, and they named it OG after the molding you see here is an OG curve. Oh. And that one dates about 1850. That was one of the earlier OGs. Any uh, story behind view in Rome, Italy? No, but what, what they did is they that clock probably was sold overseas because uh, I probably used to bring a lot like that back from uh, England uh, when I used to buy over there. But I don't know who brought this one back. But it's uh, they used to make them for for the consumer market in different countries that they sold them in, uh, or even here. So, so is that an American clock? Sure, yeah. it's an yeah. American clock. It's Chauncey Jerome. New Haven, it's signed on the face. Oh, yeah. But it has a nice label inside. Oh, yeah. Huh. And it chimes on the hour. Nothing fancy, just simple gong. But these clocks, when they first started manufacturing them, when Chauncey Jerome started manufacturing them in 1850, they were the first dollar clock. They sold for one dollar. This is catalog from 1890? Yeah, that's in New Haven. This yeah. is in the Ann Welsh, Forestville, Connecticut. Yeah. There's no picture. Yeah, they've got pictures in here. This was the size of some of their factories in Connecticut. This was oh, yeah. one, one company's factories. Wow. That one burnt down and they'd rebuild it again. And, but when you take uh, any one of these companies, so that's this is a real catalog. This one. This is yeah. a reprint of an actual catalog for yeah. this one for the year 1900. Oh, yeah. Okay, when they sold these. Yeah. You see how it says assortment C, assortment B? Yeah. Well, a dealer or a general store or anybody, a jeweler that wanted to handle these clocks, they would order them by the assortment. They would buy assortment B, and they would get that one, that one, that one, and that one. Uh, yeah. They'd be similar, but not exactly the same as each other, right? Well, so you bought four clocks out of the assortment. They cost $4.25 in 1900 when they in 1900 that one clock that one model compared to the others that they might have made a hundred thousand of those that year and then you multiply that by all the others and all the other varieties of assortments that they made these were all what they call kitchen clocks we mm -hmm. call gingerbread clocks today uh, and they just it's hard to fathom how many clocks they yeah. actually made yeah and this is a Scandinavian grandfather yeah. part from when? 1790? Yeah, it's been repainted. Uh, that's why the paint looks so good on it. Is this a customer's clock? Yeah. But the thing is, if you look at the mechanism on it, you might get a kick out of that. It's very crude. And it's all brass and iron. You can see it from the side here. Oh, yeah. So... And this one also has, a, that's the original key, I guess, because that opens the latch. The weights are down here. Uh, See, even the lock, it's all wrought iron, blacksmith made. 
So maybe not made by an actual clock ma maker? Oh, it would have been made by a clock maker. Oh, yeah. You know, all the gears would have to be cut uh, by machine. Yeah. Hand operated machine, but by yeah. machine. Yeah. Put the mechanism. Considering it was made in 17, late 1700s, it's, it's actually quite a good clock. It's quite accurate. American Wooden Works Movement from about 1820, made by Eli Terry and Sons in, in Plymouth, Connecticut. Uh, these were one-day clocks. You had to wind them every day. The mechanism was all wood with the exception of a few brass parts and steel parts because at, at that time you had to import all the uh, steel and brass from England and it cost a lot of money even when they made these but the gears this and the plates of the movement these were American white oak the gears the all the gears inside here were cherry wood and the shafts that go through the gears were mountain laurel and they held up just as well as uh, almost as well as the brass movement they made them commercially and in great quantity from about 1815 to 1840 when you go to re repair these, do, are you hand making some of the parts or do the parts stay durable? No, they stay durable, but like on a wooden works, you can get like a tooth or two will break on a gear and you take it all apart. In fact, when I take all this apart, I scrub all the parts with Murphy's oil, soap and water uh, to, and they come out looking like brand new wood that just came out of a workshop. And uh, but the the gears that might be damaged, I can cut a section out of the gear, dovetail in a new piece of cherry wood or whatever wood it was made out of, and then I can actually cut out the gears teeth with a uh, jeweler saw, and then finish them with a file, and they'll work as good as the original. No, they, they're really quite durable. This that goes right in there. Oh uh, yeah. What kind of clock is that? This one's a Seth Thomas, oh. uh, probably from made about 1860. Yeah. Uh, is it unusual to see a metal case? Yeah, you don't see many brass cases at all. Most and of them. And that's are, the chime. Yeah, that's the gong. Um, that's the chime. It would hit. Only it wouldn't sound quite as tinny because the strike hammer has a leather tip, so it would sound more mellow. Mm -hmm. But this was a, they, they made some great quality Connecticut made by Seth Thomas. The mechanism, this is the mechanism, the mm -hmm. pendulum that you see inside here. That hangs up in the back of the mechanism. Yeah. And the mechanism makes it uh, tick back and forth. So the what? hands go on here, yeah. the second hand goes on here. Oh, yeah. And then there's a on this one, it's like the Howard. It is a, it's a heavy weight that hangs on here to make it go. This is the weight for that one. And that hangs on the pulley there and makes the clock run for a week. And these are also quite accurate. Almost as good as the Howard. You can get these to within half a minute. A so what, what uh, the mechanism that's inside there, you see all these wheels and cogs turning are there specific names for the wheels themselves uh, and, and how does how, does it sort of just why do you need so many wheels in order to well what you're doing is the the weight drives this big gear here uh -huh. over on this side okay that drives the next gear which drives the next gear and each one reduces the uh, the uh, drive down to one wheel and that wheel is called the escape wheel and there's a part called the verge which ticks back and forth against that escape wheel and what you're actually doing with a, any pendulum clock or even a like a ship's clock you're allowing the spring to unwind and at a uniform rate over the course of a week and this these hands will turn with the uh, time but all it is, is is just allowing if in other words most clocks if you take the pendulum off you can hear the clock mechanism go tick 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 you know like it wants to run real fast and that's what it is without a pendulum it'll run very fast 
Sure. Oh, I take it like this and I look at look it over. Uh, this I would automatically replace this cable for because it's stainless steel cable. I replace it with a new brass cable, right? Or something like that. Uh, this is a cable that I would use on that and replace that. But I would do that last. What it, what I would do after I remove the old cable is take this mechanism entirely apart. I would take all the parts, put them in a basket, and I have an ultrasonic cleaner, and, and I put them in a clock cleaning solution, so that when they come out of the clock cleaning solution, this is what they look like. Instead of, they look like brand new bright brass mechanism, uh, and then one after that, I'll. It, like this one's time and strike. You got gears over here for the time and gears over here for the strike. I would put each set of gears back in the mechanism one at a time and I would check for worn bushings. The bushings are where the gears stick out of the holes on the front and back plate of the movement. Mm -hmm. And as you can see on this one, this one doesn't have a bushing. That's the way they were made. They, they were just tiny holes in the brass, that they can but at, over the years when they get worn and they're worn into an oval that's shape, that's when you have again, to put a new bushing in. So you would cut oh, the yeah. hole out and press yeah, in a brand that's new that's bushing, and that's yeah, what this is, is and this is, go, this is, it has, these are all new bushings four, five, that have been replaced. So it makes it, the clock mechanism, all the gears are back in their original position. Some decent and ready units. to run like brand new. You're gonna get some middle of the And then road. after you get that all done, you put it back you know, in the clock. And you, specials, you, we you oil it, of course, yeah, and but then you put it back in the really clock and you test it. That, um, in this case here, uh, there's a rod that comes yeah, off of here down, down, down through this slot on the bridge, and the pendulum would hang on the bottom of that and go tick tock back and forth. This gear here that you see, that would be pushing it right here mm -hmm. and, and the weight would be doing that the weight would hang off if it of makes here. it till next Tuesday or Wednesday then I know I've got it done right here's the rest of the gears for the strike side for that mechanism but I, I know this is okay it's just uh, after I test it for the uh, running period I'll take it all apart again, put all this stuff in it, and it'll be a time and strike clock again. I got to send it to an expert that'll match this. 1885, and so you, you, you sent the, the bottom glass is broken because it fell off the wall. Yeah, and the case broke apart, so I'm re-gluing that. And and, and where do you get glass that 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 well, act well, do first people of all, cut I have, it or? I have antique glass uh -huh. I, I've been always putting aside antique glass for years you know wavy and ripply glass and so I cut two glasses for the door and, uh, plus I sent him the original that was broken that's the door Oh, yeah. And it's all gold, and then the center part is burgundy like that. Oh, yeah. And he's making a repainting the glasses that I sent him. But I, I, when I repaint, have them repainted, I like to do it on antique glass because it looks better in the clock. So is this a is who would have bought a clock like this back in most, 1850? Most of these were bought by uh, businesses in schools, railroad stations, the MBTA in Boston. They had probably one of these in, or one of their other models in every station. Uh, but the uh, Connecticut companies didn't sell many in, uh, in Boston. Howard was the biggest seller and Waltham maybe was the second biggest. And, um, and, made, and what did they, they made, cost when they originally bought them? The Howards were in the... Uh, Twenty-five to thirty dollar range in 1880. That mm -hmm. was a lot of money. Yeah. And the uh, the Connecticut clocks of similar type, you could probably buy for half the price, but they weren't as they weren't the quality of a, of a Howard. I mean, everything about a Howard, all the steel parts are cut hardened steel. The plates are very hard brass. These things will last forever. This needs to be cleaned. When I clean this, it'll look like it was made yesterday. And is that a pendulum style clock? And you see yeah. the cable coming down, right? That's the original pendulum. Oh, it goes yeah. inside here. Wow. I think I've seen these clocks in railroad stations. 
Not as many as you would used to, but yeah. yeah. Hang there. So once you get this all cleaned, it it's gonna run like it did originally. Oh yeah. Yeah, these will run within 10, 20 seconds a week. They're, they're very high quality clocks. The uh, and these are weight driven. You have a weight that hangs off of here and runs down the clock and drives the clock for a week. Um, lesser expensive clocks, instead of being weight driven, would be spring driven. You would wind up a mainspring. And spring driven clocks, there, you can get them to within two minutes a week, maybe even a minute, but you can't get them as accurate as these. And the accuracy for this one you mentioned was uh, ten to twenty seconds. Yeah, so? you could you could, for a week. If, if you want to tweak tweak the pendulum, this is where you would adjust it up right there on the pendulum, raise and lower the pendulum, right there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you want to take take some time, have a little patience, you can get these to run. Within some seconds, was one of the big ones here on the cable. And this is from the 90s. It, yeah. It's a kit clock, huh? It looks pretty nice. It's not bad, and it has a, a nice quality mechanism. Yeah. Oh. Is that a recording? No, or? That's, you can see it. Pretty nice. Okay. Huh. That's it. That's